Today I'm going to show you a mini PC and this one is by Mealy and it's the Quieter 2 fanless mini PC. It has a uh, Intel Celeron J4125 CPU and it can do 2 HDMI out um, capable of 4K at 60 the wired internet as well as the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz AC dual band Wi-Fi. There is quite a few different options to choose from when you look on the internet and the one I got today is the 8 gigabyte of RAM and 128 gigabyte of storage built in. You can put a M2 SSD uh, up to 1 terabyte so if you need more storage then you can expand this kind of device is very good for light work office work and maybe some uh, kind of entertainment system for me the major selling point for this type of machine is that it's an all-in-one device at about 250 pounds i think is as good as it can get but as well as a fanless design which is very good for working in a studio environment for example here I don't know if you can hear it or not, but my PC is actually making loads of noise because of the fan. But in my studio, um, I tend to have one of these um, link up to my television. So if I want to use some um, light computing power stuff, then I can run it off without destroying my footage, the audio. Now, my video is never scripted, so you be the judge of how good or how bad this product is. Leave it in the description and let me know. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe to my channel if you find my information useful. So it comes in like this design, um, the company logo on the side here and the specifications on the rear here. Now this is not the first mini PC that I tested. I already tested a few different company ones. Um, they all have their strengths and weaknesses. The main point is make sure you choose the right one for you because there are so many different combinations. I would say the 8 gigabyte of RAM is the minimum. Um, I tend to stay away from anything like the 4 gigabyte version. Um, they're just not adequate. And with RAM, you can't really change, so you are stuck with the one that you choose. Uh, let's have a look at what is inside the box. Okay, once you open the box, you got a quick start guide, which shows you everything that you will get. And I'm always fascinated by taking out a mini PC because they are just annoyingly small. Look at this. So they are designed to be uh, kind of stored behind your um, television. Um, obviously you can use a computer monitor. I'm going to hook up to my dual monitor here in a minute with HDMI. But um, you can actually mount it behind your television and then just have the HDMI go into your telly and then turn your tally into a um, computer. Um, very sleek design. Metal casing, which is necessary to help to disperse the heat. Got a power button in the front. Three USB ports on the side. One USB port on the back. You got SD card slot, two HDMI. A USB-C powered. Okay, that's interesting. So they've gone away with the normal uh, 35 mil jack, they gone for a USB-C power device. And then you've got your Ethernet port. And you've got a Kingston lock uh, on the side. I mean, if you are going to mount it in a public place, uh, for example, use it as a uh, multimedia display, you don't want people to nick your <laughs> computer. So they do have a Kingston lock options. What is this? You've got a warning message on top. The fanless PC disperses heat into the air, we know that, it will get hot. Alright, so they do say do not use um, USB-C power adapter, but use their own one. Oh, that's, uh, that's a strange one, but anyway, at least they warn you on the front, so you don't plug in your own USB-C power devices. So, first layer is your mini PC, and I will just illustrate Look at how small, <laughs> look at how small that is. This is just ridiculous. Okay, so what else do you get? You get a few adapters. In the UK, we use a three pin puck. And this is the one that they were saying is slightly different from your power device uh, USB-C. So you have to use the 
one that they provide you with. All right, so that's uh, pretty much simple enough. So what I'll do now is I will set this up and we go through a few basic together. So you guys can have a look and see how this device works. So that's all you get. And the fantastic thing about this is this is a whole PC already. There's nothing you need to configure or hardware wise. You don't need to put anything in there. I mean, you can upgrade the SSD um, inside with the M2 kind of SSD in there, but um, just plug and play. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap over my setup here to this, and then I'm going to give you a wide angle to see my workspace and with this one powering all my devices. See you in a minute. Okay, so it does look a bit busy with the wiring and um, because it is. So you got two for my keyboard, one for my mouse. So those are three USB port used on the side. So it's a great job that they have three USB port over there. At the back, I got HDMI one and two for my two monitor and the power supply, which is a USB-C, which it comes with. So that leaves me with a Ethernet port and the USB port at the back which I'm not going to use. And um, let's switch it on and have a look. I might need to change the setting on my monitor because I am using DisplayPort with my PC. And obviously this one here is using HDMI. All right, so dual screen automatically working. So this is a 2K screen, not 4K, but that's just what my capable, but that's my hardware. So um, let's set this up. The usual kind of uh, Windows setup that you need to go through okay so all this is running off this little device obviously the power adapter is out of the screen at the moment but this can easily mount behind the monitor okay so now we have it booted and this is into Windows. Um, there's a lot of things that I want to show you guys, but let's go into the basic stuff. All right, so it has Intel Celeron running at two gigahertz, eight, gig eight gigabyte of RAM, Windows 10 Pro, and manufacturer is Melee Technology. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to um, update Windows. Right, so now I have everything installed. So one by one, let's go through what it can and what it can't do. For example, um, Lightburn. This is my laser engraving software. It runs it perfectly fine. No problem at all because it doesn't use that much graphic power or computing power even. And then you got my Cura, this is again a uh, 3D printer slicing software. Now this one here, it will take a bit of time to render, but in terms of functionality, it's working perfectly fine as well. So again, it's not really a intensive computing power thing. So it will work, I'm just gonna minimize that. And bear in mind, this is all running kind of on the, on the RAM that it has as well. In terms of video player, it plays my, um, let me open the file for you guys. Um, in terms of uh, video playback, I think it has a uh, hardware decoding, so it has no problem playing a uh, 4D videos that I have recorded. So this is 4K from my GoPro. Playback is smooth. Obviously this is 2K, not 4K, because my screen does not go up to 4K, but it plays the video file, file perfectly. So if you use it as a media center, it's perfect. And it has zero noise, so you know there's no fan noise whatsoever. So you may be able to hear my washing machine going in the background in the kitchen. Right, so let's stop this one and put it in the RAM. And then you have Office. Now I don't have Microsoft Office installed on the computer. I use the Office 360, but again, it doesn't use that much computer power because literally everything is being done on the server side. So
Um, no lag whatsoever, it just worked perfectly fine. Again, let's minimize that as well. Excel, same as Office, it doesn't use much graphics power, so it works perfectly fine. Let's minimize that as well. The only thing that I find this one can't really do is gaming, but I'm going to show that in a minute. Let's do a speed test. So a ping of six and max out my uh, internet connection. I have fiber to my end of my street and then copper wire to my house. Um, 60, 70 is the max that it can do. So download speed is maxed out. Upload speed is kind of maxed out as well. Usually I only get about 15, maybe 10 even. So that's just a quick Wi-Fi test. You can use it wired, but for my convenience here, I just use a wireless connection. Okay, at this point, this, this is one of the problem I find with this particular computer. So when I was using the default um, browser for Microsoft, YouTube is really, really lagging. And when I download Chrome to go through um, watching YouTube video, for example, if I just show you this. So this is a clip that I shot <clears throat> with my drone. Let's do a full screen. And you can see that sometime, you know, if I have my cursor on the browser, it kind of lagging. But if I, let's say, if I bring it back to the beginning and take my cursor off the screen completely, and now it plays perfect. So there is some kind of a software problem that I need to deal with. I don't think it's the hardware. I'm sure the machine is fine, but the software for some reason, it just doesn't really work. On my normal PC, it would never happen like this. But with this one, as long as my cursor or my control is on this screen, doesn't matter if it is a big screen or small screen. I find that it lags, it lags a little bit. But as soon as my cursor is off the screen, just playing as normal, then it's just as smooth as silk. But anyway, browsing using as a multimedia device is perfectly fine. I think this is really best suited to be mounted behind a tele behind a television as a media center because it makes zero noise, which is really great. But for uh, on the desktop application with YouTube viewing, there's something there's to work on that. But let me show you what this one is not really good at, is computer gaming. So this is a game that I download. So it's not like Roblox, which is like 2D game. This is actually a 3D game. And I downloaded a uh, FPS counter to show you guys in terms of performance. So this is a 2K monitor and I have to run it on a window just to get the game to run. I think it can't do 1080p, so anything less than 1080p is start to become more playable. But I think you need to find a sweet spot for your kind of a play style. Yeah, for me, seven. I think 720p, but you know, full-scale graphics is a lot better, more playable. But you, everyone is different, so. And don't forget, I got a big screen here, so if you are on a 1080p monitor, it will be slightly bigger, I think. So that's the end of my video. Here is the mini, uh, mini computer. So it fits on my palm. I mean, it's a bit, uh, a bit clumsy now because I got all the wires hanging out of it. So if you hang it behind your monitor, you hide all the wires, and um, it will be quite slick. Um, it is quite warm to touch now because I've been playing games with it. So um, in terms of like you know desktop working, perfectly fine for my um, design software and stuff like that. Occasional gaming, mm, yes and maybe. Um, I don't like the low graphics, so I might give that a pass. But in terms of using it as an office environment stuff, running on dual screen, 
perfect. There's no installation, no hardware changes, unless you want to expand the memory, which I find um, kind of half filled with one of my big games <laughs> installed. Uh, but if you're just running it with Office environment um, software, you probably don't need it. But if you do need to, a M2 SSD is available for install up to one gigabyte. And um, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time with more interesting gadget. Bye-bye.